Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new Babyhawk R Pro from Emacs. In this video I'm going to go over its features, set it up on Betafly and then head the doors and test it out. The R Pro is available in two versions, so you can either get a buy and fly version, which is the version that I've got, that comes with an FRSky D8 receiver, or you can get the plug and play version, which doesn't come with any receiver. As you can see the packaging is very compact, inside we get in the quadcopter, along with the velcro strap on the bottom, and also the control board for the Cadex camera and spare screws, two sets of Rush 2.5 inch propellers, and the instructions manual for the quadcopter and for the Cadex Turbo Micro S1 camera. Just like the Baby Oak R, the first thing you notice about the R Pro version is its canopy. It is beautifully designed and made out of polycarbonate, so it's also very durable. On the center of the R Pro, we can find the Emacs Mini Magnum F4 to light all in one stack. The bottom board is a 4 in 1 25 ampere BLL32 ESC. Then we can find an F4 flight controller that has a built in buzzer and two LED indicators on the back. On top of the stack, we can find the VTX. It features an M6 antenna connector and supports smart audio, and it has selectable output strength of 25 and 200 millivolts. By default, it comes locked to 25 millivolts, but it's very easy to unlock it. All you have to do is to press this button over here while powering the quadcopter. Then you're going to see the U on the display, which means that now the VTX has been unlocked. Since this is the Binafly version, next to the VTX we can find an FRSky D8 compatible receiver. Moving on to the front, we can find an Emacs branded Cadex Turbo Micro S1 FED camera. It features a 600 TV line CCD sensor and has a 2.1mm lens. In order to configure the camera settings, you can either use the provided OSD control board, or even better, you can use the camera control feature on Betaflight and use your remote controller in order to configure it, since the OSD pin on the back of the camera is already wired to the flight controller. As for motors, the R Pro is using the Emacs RS1106 version 2 6000 KV motors. As opposed to the first version of these motors, these motors now feature a half open bottom design and they support 3S Lipo batteries. So even though the all-in-one stack supports 4S Lipo batteries, don't use this quadcopter with 4S Lipo batteries because it's going to destroy the motors, so stick to 2 and 3S Lipo batteries. On the right side of the R Pro, we can find an XT30 battery connector and now instead of just sticking out from the side, the capacitor is connected to the XT30 connector in this manner, which is pretty nice. In addition, the battery leads are pretty short, so I recommend that if you can do it, to replace them with longer ones, and I think that I read somewhere that Emacs do plan to release future versions with longer battery leads. Anyway, what you need to do is to mount the excitator connector to one of the arms, otherwise in case of a crash, it might be ripped off, and then you will need to replace the EC, which is pretty expensive. By the way, the first version of the Baby Oak R did have a problem that the EC got destroyed for many users because it was way too close to the bottom plate and then it got shorted. In this version it's not going to happen because as you can see the EC is pretty far from the bottom plate. As for the frame itself, now it features a unibody bottom plate as opposed to the Baby Oak R which featured replaceable arms. The thickness of the bottom plate is 3mm. The wheelbase of the frame is 120 centimeters, and the distance between the back motors and the front ones, and also from the front ones to the back ones, is 85 centimeters, so this frame features a true X design. After adding the propellers, the weight of this quadcopter is 91.9 grams, so it's a pretty light 2.5 inch racer. So it's lighter than my current favorite 2.5 inch racer, the Gepper C Phoenix 2.5, and after flying the R Pro, we'll see if this is going to change. The next thing that I'm going to do is to bind the D8 receiver, then I'm going to go over beta flight settings and head the doors and test it with different 2S and 3S LiPo batteries from GNB. By the way, as I mentioned before, you get in with this quadcopter uh, battery velcro strap, but I don't recommend to use it. This is a very cheap one and it's not going to last for a long time. So what I recommend to get is this battery strap from RJX Obi. I've tested it and it is very durable and so far I've been very happy with their LiPo battery straps. So I'm going to leave a link down below so you can check it out. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
three S type of batteries, and it is well tuned out of the box. In addition, I did crash this quadcopter a few times, and these propellers turned out to be very durable propellers, and the quadcopter also could take some hits, although on the last crash I chopped these parts of the arms, and what I recommend to do is to 3D print TPU guards for the motors, and I actually think that it's best if Emacs could include these TPU guards along with the quadcopter, or at least sell it separately. Another issue that I had is with the RSSI of the radio receiver, it is supposed to be outputted on channel 8, however according to Betaflight I saw it on channel 9. I did try both options, but still the value that was displayed on the OSD was incorrect, so if I will figure out this issue, I will keep you updated. Anyway, according to my flat experience, it's going to be pretty much limited by the VTX, which is okay, but not extraordinary, and when it's set to 200mV, you can expect to get about 400 meters of range. In terms of flight time, you can expect about 3 minutes of flight time using 550mAh like batteries, and I think that out of the batteries that I tested, these two batteries performed the best, so this is the 550mAh 2S battery, and this one is the 3S version, so I'm going to leave the links to these batteries in the description box down below. Now I'm going to answer the question that I asked myself in the beginning of the video, if the Baby Oak Owl Pro is going to be my favorite 2.5 inch racer and take the place of the Gepro C Phoenix, and the answer is maybe no, I'm actually not really sure. The Gepro C Phoenix does outperform the Baby Oak Owl Pro in a couple of aspects. First of all, it's faster, especially on 4S type of batteries, and second of all, the VTX of the Phoenix is better than the VTX of the Baby Oak Owl Pro. The Baby Oak Owl Pro does have a couple of advantages over the Phoenix. First of all, I think that it looks better. Second of all, it has a better camera. And finally, it is $20 cheaper, which is something that you also should keep in mind. Anyway, both options are going to be very good options, but if you're looking for more speed, I think that you should go with the Gepro C Phoenix. In the next two weeks or so, I'm going to post another video of the Emacs Baby Oak Owl Pro, where I'm going to upgrade it, so stay tuned. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Baby Oak Owl Pro, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.